Hey everyone, let's talk about rapid sequence intubation and what I like to call the RSI timeline. Now, when you're in the resuscitation room and a patient has impending respiratory failure and they're about to be intubated, it may seem that there's a lot of chaos or that everything's happening all at once. It's actually not the case. In fact, there's a very uh, distinct sequence of events that needs to happen and it need, they all need to happen at their appropriate time. And if you're the person at the head of the bed, you need to understand that RSI timeline. You need to understand the sequence of events and how they occur so you can keep your patient safe. So we're gonna run through it here. Let's start about 10 minutes prior to intubation. You've decided this patient needs to be intubated and you're gonna step up to the head of the bed. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna assess their respiratory status. Uh, what's their oxygen level? Are they, uh, is their chest rise? Are they breathing on their own? If they're not, uh, this is not the time to put a non-rebreather on them. You actually need to provide them with positive pressure ventilation. Uh, usually that's with a BVM if they're still uh, somewhat conscious. Now, uh, in most cases, in a patient who needs to be intubated, they have a rapidly evolving airway, they have some mental status, they're uh, somewhat cooperative, but they're hypoxic and they're tiring out, this is the most common case that we intubate patients, and in that case, you can go ahead and optimize their pre-oxygenation status first. First thing you want to do is uh, sit them up, put a nasal cannula on them at flush rate. You're going to put a non-rebreather on them at flush rate, make sure the reservoir bag is filled full and that it's fitting appropriately to their face. Uh, once that's done, you're going to ask them to take some deep breaths and help work with you to flush all the nitrogen out of their lungs and make sure that uh, they have a good oxygen reserve. Because with RSI, when we give sedatives and paralytics, once those are given, the patient is no longer breathing on their own. And they need to have that oxygen reserve so that you can safely intubate them. That's called safe apnea time, and we'll discuss that in another section. Okay, your patient is all set. You're gonna also comfort them, put a hand on their shoulder, tell them we got you, we're gonna take care of you, give them some reassurance. This is obviously a scary time for them. You're gonna make sure they have good IV access. You're gonna put them on the monitor. You're gonna make sure that the pulse ox is working. And now your patient is set. Now that that's done, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna move on to preparing your equipment. Now, this happens usually right after that, uh, sometime, somewhere between 10 and 5 minutes before intubation. You're going to do things like making sure that you have suction available and working. You have a large bore catheter or some catheter available to suction the airway that's working. You're going to make sure you have a BVM connected to oxygen and available if you need it. You're going to set up all your equipment you need to actually intubate the patient. This will include your laryngoscope, whether it's a video or direct laryngoscope. You're going to make sure you have some backup tools like maybe a bougie. Uh, you're going to make sure you have a couple of different sizes of ET tubes, uh, a, a stylet, uh, some lubrication, a 10cc syringe so you can inflate the cuff when you're done, uh, and you're going to make sure that you have equipment for backup. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be out on the table, but it needs to be nearby. You need to know that you have a superglottic airway available, and you also need to know that your phona kit is somewhere nearby so that you can have it available if you need it. Now that you've got everything all set up, now it's time to tell your team leader and your team what it is you're thinking and what it is you're about to do. One way to do that is to have a checklist. If you have a checklist, you can go through not only how you prepared the patient, that they have the oxygen mask on, that they're, they're sitting up appropriately, that they're on the monitor, that the IV is working. You can also make sure that you have all your equipment available and you're going to say to your team, this is my plan, this is what I'm going to do first. If that doesn't work, this is what I'm gonna do next, and so on and so forth. All the way down through your algorithm to the can't intubate, can't oxygenate scenario or KAIKO scenario where you would perform a surgical airway. That shared net mental model needs to be discussed with the team prior to any medications being given. Once that's done and everybody agrees that we're ready to do this, you're gonna go ahead and do the induction and paralysis with a sedative and a paralytic. At this point, you've reached that point of no return. The patient is no longer gonna be breathing on their own, and you will have to make sure that you are 100% ready to oxygenate and ventilate that patient by any means necessary, uh, should you need to. Hopefully though, once you've given the sedative and the paralytic and you've performed appropriate pre-oxygenation, their oxygenation should be adequate. Their O2 sat should stay close to 100%. 
uh, and that should allow you time to let the sedative and the paralytic work. That takes about 45 seconds. And usually in that time, I recommend if you're a little nervous, just take a deep breath, give yourself some positive reinforcement, tell yourself, you got this. Now as that 45 second uh, mark approaches and the patient is obviously becoming more relaxed and optimal intubating conditions have been achieved, you can go ahead and take that non-rebreather off, uh, position the patient appropriately, and go ahead and deliver that tube. Tube delivery shouldn't really take any more than 30 to 45 seconds, depending on your skill level. Uh, sometimes you can run into unexpected difficulties, but again, take a deep breath, take a look at the oxygen saturation. You can tell that if you've pre-oxed your patient appropriately and they're still satting at 100% a minute and a half into the procedure, you still have time to complete it. Once the tube is delivered, your job isn't done. You need at that point to make sure that the tube is in the right place and confirmed. So you're going to inflate the cuff. You're gonna, usually I like to keep the video laryngoscope in place and give some positive pressure uh, breaths with a BVM so I can see condensation in the tube through the cords. You're gonna connect end tidal CO2 and see good waveform. You're gonna see that the oxygen saturation is appropriate. You're gonna listen to the breath sounds, listen to the stomach, make sure that you have good bilateral breath sounds and that the tube is in the right place. And before you let go of that tube, you're gonna make sure that you're handing it off to your uh, respiratory uh, therapist who's going to make sure that that tube is secured before you do anything else. That should take about a minute to a minute and a half and once that's completed the next step is you're going to have to recheck the patient's hemodynamics. Yes the airway is secure now but giving sedatives and paralytics uh, and providing positive pressure to the patient can definitely affect hemodynamics and you want to make sure that you're protecting the patient's cardiac output and ensuring that you don't need to start pressors or fluids or both uh, in order to make sure that their hemodynamics remain stable and they don't develop some sort of peri-intubation cardiac collapse. Once you've adequately uh, addressed any hypotension or other hemodynamic issues, now it's time to move on to sedation and analgesia. It's absolutely essential that you take care of this. You're going to give a sedative and you're going to give probably rocuronium, which could last 45 minutes while the sedative is worn off after five or six minutes. You do not want your patient to be awake. You do not want them to feel the discomfort of being on a ventilator with a tube in the trachea. You want to make sure that uh, whatever you're giving them, some fentanyl, some propofol, whatever it is that you're giving them that is ready to go and that it's being delivered into the patient within just a couple of minutes of intubation. Now that that's all done, the airway is secure, their hemodynamics are stable, and the patient is comfortable, you can move on to the next steps of your resuscitation and try to figure out what's going on with this patient so you can help them. All right, that's the RSI timeline and the procedures and the steps. We have a wonderful Own the Head of the Bed section on our website on the Protected Airway Collaborative. This goes into the, all of this in detail. Go ahead and check it out, and I will talk to you soon.